letter yesterday, and I can't wait to get it back to see what's going on in my life and to see how my relationship with myself is developing. Yesterday, I learned about my faults and casualties. Tomorrow, I will come to grips with how great I am, and next week, I'll begin teaching courses in coolness where water can enroll itself to learn how to become ice cubes. <laughs> I'm 39 years old, and I'm American, which means I can be president. Oh, yeah, and I'm big and white and fat and, you know, whatever. Uh, but I think I'm going to wait till Obama's done, uh, so that way I can bring back facial hair as a symbol of a good leader. I could be the first president of the United States of America to get elected without a campaign budget, but instead I would use the help of small woodland animals who actually control the winds of change. Come on, squirrels are awesome. You look at a squirrel, you want to vote for the right things. I will have Gomez, Neil Diamond, Neil Young, The Roots, uh, R.C. Kislowski, Sigur Rós, and myself perform in my inauguration. Yeah. Will you, will you be there? Oh, I'll wait till you're done eating. Maybe. I'm sorry. The White House will serve ramen noodles 24 hours a day on tap. <laughs> I'm gonna be busy, right? <laughs> like, shit to do, you know? I believe that I am living my life to the exact fullest, but I have to accept the fact that there are others with much fuller lives than mine. I will make up for it with my lack of hunger, and I will catch up. If I change my name to Robin Hood, I can steal from the rich, and I can give to the poets. <laughs> Yeah. I can also then wear tights, and then people will finally start to understand me. Because deep down, I think I'm probably just a ballerina with a penchant for late night television, fuzzy slippers, and dictionaries. <laughs> Yesterday, I felt like a singer with a song I couldn't sing. Today, I'm a father who can never have children. And tomorrow, I'll rest inside a full night of sleep for a planet of billions of lovers and fighters who love to fight about everyone else on the planet. I promised myself many, many years ago that I would always put things down on paper. Whether it was in letters to women who never knew I loved them, or in memos written on post-it notes stuck to the lockers of bullies demanding their immediate surrender. <laughs> it's not easy to convince a table of nerds to fight without a 20-sided die, but I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> I promised myself a very long time ago that I would never settle for average or mediocre, and that I would always try to find the best and worst within myself so that maybe I'd be able to work the two out so we could learn from each other. It's one thing to say that I'm worthy of love, but it's another thing to say that I'm worthy of my own. So here I am, with a lot of love to give, and it seems as though I'm still trying to find myself so I know who to give it to. You guys, like a lot of you, maybe even every single one of you in this room, I too have lived a life with such varied confidence. So I mailed myself a love letter yesterday. It was just a dress rehearsal, so that I would know how to respond to the people that told me I'm a great friend or I'm just like one of the girls. <laughs> I've learned to deal with it, but now it's time to play with the hands I've been dealt. I know I'm not tall, dark, and handsome, but two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> now you're probably wondering which two I'm talking about. <laughs> but I only need one person to figure that out on her own. Most people say all they really want is a man with a good sense of humor, right? <laughs> But in reality, I'm just the right height for a man who loves life. When you stack that ass at five feet six inches, I'm all you need. And if I'm gonna find someone who digs me with life's biggest shovel, then I'm just gonna have to learn to dig myself first. Thank you.